if we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. You can see heroes every day going in and out of factory gates. You meet heroes across a counter, and they're on both sides of that counter. There are entrepreneurs with faith in themselves and faith in an idea who create new jobs, new wealth, and opportunity. There are individuals and families whose voluntary gifts support church, charity, culture, art, and education. Their patriotism is quiet but deep. Their values sustain our national life. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. We are a nation under God, and I believe God intended for us to be free. The crisis we are facing today does not require of us the kind of sacrifice so many thousands of others were called upon to make. It does require, however, our best effort and our willingness to believe in ourselves and to believe in our capacity to perform great deeds, to believe that together, with God's help, we can and will resolve the problems which now confront us. And after all, why shouldn't we believe that? We are Americans. Good morning. Can you believe it is Memorial Day weekend already? God bless you on this holiday weekend, like we're all going to take off work, huh? Hey, let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that we have that we can worship you. Lord, I pray that you would anoint every person watching, anoint every home, every family member. Father, I pray that you would show up with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and that you would just give us a day that we will never forget in the Spirit, Lord, and we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. You are God, and we lift you up. We keep singing, keep praising, we won't stop. Give it all we can to show what it is.
Praise the Lord. He is the only king forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to remind you about your tithe and your offering this morning. I want to thank you for being so faithful in your giving uh, through this whole time. Um, we are praying that uh, those of you who are laid off, who aren't working, that you would be reinstated, get your job, get back to your jobs as soon as possible. Um, I also want to remind you that Cindy is going to start another devotional. It's going to start tomorrow at 1025 in the morning, and it's going to go every day uh, during the week. Hey, we have a special announcement this morning from Mr. Mike. Good morning. You know, Chaz and I are glad that we can bring church online to you during this time, but next week week, Sunday, May 31st, we want to do something really special with your children. We want to have a meeting. We're going to use Zoom. And if you want to join, please contact us. And that's for the children's security. You can contact us via social media, text message, email, um, and we'll send you the information for that meeting. So we love, we really miss your kids and we really want to see them again. So please join us for this meeting next Sunday. But for this Sunday, please enjoy Children's Church.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know that God inhabits the praises of His people? When you find yourself going throughout the day and you think, God, where are you? What is going on here? I just can't seem to get it together. Find a place, put on some music, and just start praising Him. As you begin to worship Him, you will feel His presence just fill the room, fill your heart. He will be right there because He dwells amongst the praises of His people. I pray, Father God, for every household who is watching today. I ask you, Father, as they go throughout their day, Lord, as they're homeschooling their children, as they're working their jobs from home, Lord, that at moments that they will take and set aside some things to come into your presence, Lord, they will feel your presence upon them. That your peace would come and settle in their home. Father God, that they will know that the God of the universe loves them, that he has not forgotten them. And Lord, that your presence, in your presence, things happen. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your presence, there is peace and there is healing and there is deliverance. Oh, Father, we worship you today. We worship you and we invite you into our homes, into our lives, and we give you praise and glory because you alone deserve it, Lord. We praise you today, Jesus, for it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Praise him this morning. Last week we talked about the day of Pentecost when 120 people in the upper room were baptized in the Holy Spirit. With his newfound power in the Holy Spirit, Peter preached a sermon that day and 3,000 people accepted Jesus. Now, we want to go toward the end of chapter 4. I want to read verse 31 to you because the disciples received a refilling of the Holy Spirit. 
says, after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. <clears throat> so after chapter two, there's a 24 hour period that is recorded in chapters three and four. During that time frame, Peter and John experience uh, the, the power of the Holy Spirit is revealed and the same power that was revealed to them that they experienced is also available to us. So let's take a look at what happened in Acts chapter 3. Peter and John are on the way to the temple. They saw a lame man sitting by the gate begging for money. Peter took a stand for Jesus and told the man, we don't have any money, but we'll give you something better. The scripture says, Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Now let me ask you a question. Would you have taken a stand like that for God that Peter took? Or would it have just been easier for you to throw a dollar in his cup? You know, a few days earlier, if Peter and John were walking past that man, they would have probably walked past that man. But now they were filled with the Holy Spirit and the power of the Spirit of God in the power, they took a stand. Of course, one thing led to another with Peter being on a spiritual high. He took another bold stand, preached another message. Since the Spirit's outpouring and the Holy Spirit, he preached two messages. Twice that day, they voluntarily took a bold stand for the Lord. Man, they must have been feeling pretty good about themselves. Then we get to chapter 4. They're faced with opposition. While Peter and John were speaking, verse 1 says in chapter 4, were speaking uh, to the people, they were confronted by the priest, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus, there was a resurrection of the dead. You know, Jesus had warned the disciples sometime earlier when he walked with them that think, something like this would happen. He told the disciples in Matthew 24, you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated. Uh, all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Remember right after Jesus was crucified, the disciples exhibited some real fear. How do we know? Because they hid. Now, in the midst of what was happening, in the midst of facing public intimidation, this time... They were filled with the Holy Spirit. So today I'd like us to take a look at what we can learn from the actions of Peter and John in this portion of scripture. First of all, Jesus is our foundation. He's our foundation through the easy times and through the trying times. Verse three says they arrested them. And since it was already evening, they put them in jail until morning. So, the, la the lame man was healed about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when the miracle took place. This was probably about sundown, about 6 o'clock in the evening. So Peter and John continued to talk to the crowd for about three hours. Undoubtedly, they explained the gospel of Jesus and probably had time to answer questions from the crowd. The religious leaders showed up and they were not happy. So let me tell you what was going on here. The Sadducees believed there was no resurrection. Nobody resurrected. Not Jesus, not anybody will resurrect. They denied the existence of angels and spirits. They were not excited about this miracle. But you know what they were really disturbed about? That Peter and John had such a great crowd that was listening to what they had to say. In fact, verse 4 tells us, but many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of men who believed now totaled about 5,000. 
Can you imagine what the number actually might have been? I mean, we're talking about all these guys' wives and maybe their children. It's probably a lot more than 5,000. So the next day, verse 5 tells us, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of the religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. I mean, these were high-ranking people among the Jews. This was going to be intimidation at its very best. Well, they brought Peter and John before them and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? The scripture tells us, but then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, I want you to hear what the original meaning of that phrase is. See, it's not talking about the experience they had on the day of Pentecost. You see, the Greek form of the verb here indicates a new, a fresh filling. You see, as Peter began to speak, he was being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this doesn't mean that he lost any of the power and presence of the Holy Spirit from the day of Pentecost. No, under his present circumstance, the Lord simply gave him a fresh filling to meet this new need for power to witness the name of Jesus. You know, this is exactly what Jesus meant when he told them earlier in their ministry. But when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. Just say what God tells you at the time. For it's not you who will be speaking but the Holy Spirit. Instead of trying to defend themselves, the Spirit made their words a witness. Peter, filled anew with the Spirit, did not let these Jewish leaders frighten or intimidate him. Well, we're told in 2 Timothy, for God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline, so never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. So with Jesus as our foundation, we can obey God in the midst of opposition. They were warned not to speak in Jesus' name. Did you ever wonder why people are opposed to the name of Jesus? These leaders, they didn't want, to talk, want them to talk about Jesus. Other people don't want to hear about Jesus. That's usually because of selfish reasons. Here, these religious leaders tried to intimidate, and look what happened. It was them who became intimidated. Look what verse 13 says. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. You know, ordinary people did not speak with authority like this. But the key to their courage and freedom was not their own talent or ability. No, it was, of course, the fresh, new filling of the Holy Spirit. These Jewish leaders must have been shocked because they thought that they had gotten rid of Jesus by crucifying him. I mean, Jesus spoke to these leaders with this type of authority. And now these disciples who were trained by Jesus spoke with the same authority. Why? Because they were filled with his spirit. Well, a miracle had taken place. This man who was healed was standing up and strong with Peter and John. Suddenly, the priests and the elders had nothing to say. What could they say against such a miracle? Since they couldn't argue with what Peter was saying, here's what they did. They ordered Peter and John out of the chamber, council chamber, and conferred among themselves. What should we do with these men, they asked each other. We can't deny that they performed a miraculous sign, and everyone in Jerusalem knows about it. 
And the scripture goes on to say, so they came to the conclusion that to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in the name of Jesus again. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. They tried to use their authority to stop the spread of the gospel. But these disciples knew that the spirit who was in them was greater than they who were of the world. In the face of opposition, we've got to stand firm on our faith. In the book of Jude, it says that we must defend the faith. Jude 1.3 says, Dear friends, I have been eagerly planning to write to you about salvation, the salvation we share. But now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. It's not popular today to stand for biblical principles. It's not popular today to say that Jesus is the only way. It's certainly not possible to call sin what it is, sin. People don't want to accept the, what the Bible teaches. People want to believe that any way you choose is right. They don't want to believe that there is a right way and a wrong way. But as disciples of Jesus, we must stand in the face of opposition. As disciples of Jesus, we must stand for what the Bible teaches. As disciples of Jesus, we must defend the faith, just like the disciples did. When we stand for Jesus, his light shines through us. Verse 19 tells us, but Peter and John replied, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. I love what they said right there. Do you think God wants us to obey you? Their threats did not intimidate these two apostles at all. So calmly and courteously, but firmly, they put the responsibility back on the Jewish leaders to judge whether it was right before God to listen to them or listen to him. Then Peter and John boldly declared that they were not able to stop talking about what they had seen and heard, all because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were fulfilling the command that Jesus had to be his witnesses. They acted on the courage and the wisdom that the Holy Spirit provided for them. And God caused the testimony of these two disciples to shine brightly. The council didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God, the scripture says. The healed man had been lame for over 40 years. And now he could walk. By God's spirit, we will have victory in Jesus. When we stand for Jesus, he stands for us. In Matthew chapter 10, it says, everyone acknowledges, who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. God builds his church through people who stand firm on the solid foundation of Christ. When we stand firm for God and we pray to him, the Holy Spirit gives us power to stand together, to let our light shine. This is how God built the early church, and this is how God is still building the church today. He's looking for men and women who will stand for him. No matter what the opposition is, we must stand for God so that he can shine through us. So is your faith wavering? Maybe you don't know what wavering faith is. James tells us, when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Remember, Jesus came to overcome the world 
and he will help you to overcome whatever you're facing. And he'll do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. Stand firm in Christ today. God is with you. You're not alone. Hey, we all face challenges. In fact, we're facing challenges right now that we've never had to face before. But together, God wants us to stand firm in Him, to obey Him, to grow in Him, and to let Him shine through our lives. Maybe you have never surrendered your life to Jesus. Maybe you've never asked Him to be your Lord and Savior. I want you to know today that Jesus wants to be the cornerstone of your life. He died on the cross and rose again so that you could trust him with your life. He did it all because he loves you. He wants to forgive you. Receive him today. Let him be the cornerstone of your life. Can I pray with you right now? Jesus, I pray right now that there would be people who are watching this video who the Holy Spirit is prompting that they would pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of the things that I've done wrong, the sin that's in my life. Be a part of my life. Help me to grow in you. Help me to develop in you. Lord, thank you for giving me a place in eternity with you in jesus precious name i thank you lord amen amen Pastor preached on the power that comes from the Holy Spirit that God has sent for us that we can live in these last days for Him with boldness. And I'm telling you, without the Holy Spirit, it's going to be a challenge because He's the one that gives us the power to stand up and boldly declare Christ. Paul says, we're not of those who shrink back in times of trouble but we rise up and we stand firm on God's Word and to be able to do that we have to know God's Word I want to encourage you this week 
get into the Word of God. Open it up and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. And as He does, begin to apply those things to your life. And you will begin to see Him moving and working within you. And then go a step further. Ask the Father God to fill you with the gift of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's where the boldness came from for the disciples. For Peter and John that day as they healed the crippled man. That same power is for us today. It's for you as well. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, this week that every household will experience the power of the Holy Spirit in their midst, in their children and the parents as well. Move in our homes, I pray, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.